Welcome to the Hookup on Music with your host, Tony Bird. Hello, everyone out there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Hookup on Music. Episode 82 is here. I feel like I'm in one of those record bins, just going through the bins and going and going and going. And what do we got? We got this episode 82, which is just loaded with goodness. Um, before we get started, please tune in next Wednesday um, at 7 p.m. while uh, my good man Mike will be joining me again, and we'll be going through a lot of awesome music, so that was going to be good. So please, please tune in next Wednesday at 7 p.m. That is going to be awesome. Um, also, um, we've been talking about a lot on the station is uh, Marge Raguso, uh, one of the fellow Penguins, is fundraising for the uh, Polycystic Kidney Foundation, the P PKD Foundation. Um, if you can, please make a donation. You can go on to her um, Twitter page and find the, the link and please donate, okay? It really, really helps. 100% of each donation uh, is, will, will fund um, life-saving research. So that's very, very important. So please um, do that. But today... We are here and we got some, lots and lots of new releases and we are excited, excited to be here and excited um, for talking music, which is uh, always really a great time. And well, we're getting, we're getting close to, uh, well, getting close to the end of the summer. Okay. And even though we do have a little bit of time, sadly, I like to just to, to, uh, but to be frank, I do love summer. Um, I love summer quite a lot, but even more than loving summers i love fall so i'm excited to see what fall brings um it's going to be uh it's going to be a good time here at the hookup and everything else here at the sadistic penguin studios but uh recently um this past weekend uh Lollapalooza, they had their uh they had their little shindig and honestly i went out we're tuned into some of it hulu has the live broadcast um you could see some artists that maybe you weren't uh lucky enough to make it down there into that huge crowd in the hot heat and watch but uh i caught some 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 eye-opening uh uh artists here i'm getting started um this artist that i was very unfamiliar with um well uh chappelle roan is her name okay and i think i've got that right chappelle roan and honestly these this the songs that she uh brought to the table in this performance were, were huge <laughs> You can see that huge audience right there if you're watching live or listening to that song. The 26-year-old um, is really rising and honestly brought a huge performance of the weekend um, in a daytime set that uh, could be one of the biggest that they said they've ever seen, which is is is, is crazy. Um, a post that accessed on the official uh, Lollapalooza account says it's Chappelle's world and we're just living in it. Um, personally, I was not uh, familiar with her work. So I had to, to to dig in a little bit more, but uh, that song that you're hearing right there is is, is an indication. A uh, good luck, babe, of just honestly uh, gave me some gave me some some good pop Madonna vibes. Um, haven't dug in too much. Uh, did watch the performance, and it was definitely eye catching. Um, really, really great. Um, what's the word I'm looking for to see an artist get this kind of. Uh, play okay um she, it's really cool is that uh she, she's she's got a little help along the way which is which is which is cool um olivia rodrigo she did quite a couple uh opening um stints on a couple of her tours which just kind of keep um building um chappelle's um star and it's on the rise and honestly huge 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 um success um at Lollapalooza also a huge su su success at the old Lollapalooza is uh Bridget calls me baby who we've uh, <clears throat> we've definitely talked about on here a couple times uh, played a seven uh song set ending with a cover of George uh, Michael's careless whisper um getting started with uh, of course five tracks out the future is our way out Eddie my love I want to die in the suburbs pink palace too easy we never we were never alive. Honestly, it was a really, really awesome, awesome set. Um, Palm of Your Hand also uh, sounded really, really good. Um, luckily, had some friends who were out there for this uh, 
for this. And honestly, Frico set too that was taking a place at the same time, who we've talked about here quite a bit. Um, Lollapalooza is always meant to uh, attract those um oh what's the word i'm looking for newer rock artists and uh those those are a couple that we've been talking about here who put on a a, a couple great 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 uh sets same with the last dinner party um along with putting on a great set at Lollapalooza, they did an after show um along with doing an after show was uh the deftones the deftones did an after show uh played an 18 song set and ended from their uh debut album on um, the song uh, seven words which is just just a, just a classic <laughs> Uh, if you had a chance to make it out to that show, that after show, it was just, man, it was filled with just lots and lots of energy. And I mean, you're a fan of the band. I mean, this is exactly where you would want to see them. I mean, it's 18 um, tracks, um, Passenger being played the first time since 2019. Um, just really, really cool because at Lollapalooza, they played 14 songs. Um Guitarist Stephen Carpenter was absent. Uh, Lance uh, Jackman and Sean Lopez filled in on the guitar duties for uh, for those. But uh, who's not into seeing some uh, after some uh, some 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 after shows? You know, um, that's the one cool thing I will really really give huge props um, is Lollapalooza and them doing a lot of awesome after shows through the years. I mean, everyone from Jack White I've seen do a, a really really awesome um, live show just. All the clubs um, from Talia Hall all the way to the Metro all get involved and uh, all say, hey, you know what? We're going to uh, we're going to open up the city a little bit. But a lot, a lot of artists uh, played at Lollapalooza, watched a lot of DJ acts, which was interesting because not too familiar with a lot of different D- DJs, but it seemed to be a big, huge uh, fan favorite. Lots of people were digging in. Um, also digging in this uh, past Saturday, a great, great, great show. Uh, Sammy Hagar, the best of all worlds tour with Loverboy. Um, props to Loverboy. Uh, four of the five uh, members in the band are original members. Uh, Sammy Hagar. Um, I mean, honestly, dude, I've seen Sammy Hagar. And I said, dude, like I'm just talking to the wall here, dude. Um but uh, Sammy Hagar just really, 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 really always puts on a great show. Um, I got a chance to see um, Van Halen on that dreaded uh, 2003 tour where, unfortunately, Eddie wasn't in the, the best frame. But this Sammy Hagar uh, concert uh, coming together and just really, really doing, doing 15, 16 Van Halen songs, you know, um, Jump. Ain't talking about love. Those are on the set list with Michael Anthony singing. I uh, ain't talking about love, but when you dig into Sammy with uh, Van Halen, I mean, come on, man. Uh, Panama, Judgment Day, Pound Cake, Run Around. I'll play the Seven Seal right now. Why can't this be love when it's love? Um, really cool that uh, you were able to get um, Jason Bonham, who I saw last summer, and listen to some of the live stuff. They're uh, holding it together pretty well. Um, it's not like, oh my gosh, these just doesn't sound good. I mean, Joe Satriani has always been known to be like an Eddie Van Halen. So to kind of see just the growth in um, these guys playing and jamming, I, I, you know, got to throw a couple Sammy classics in there too. Some of his solo work, I Can't Drive, 55, Heavy Metal. Um, really, really awesome. Um, actually, the movie Heavy Metal is celebrating an uh, anniversary today. So uh, really, really great uh, concert. Um, got a chance to see this one in a box. Got really, uh, yeah, it's kind of like the box at Tinley Park isn't quite uh, right in the front row, but it gives you really awesome access to really see some really awesome stuff. So seeing Michael Anthony again, who uh, was great because I did see Van Halen with uh, David Lee Roth and it was uh, Wolfgang um, Van Halen playing in that. So again, really, really, really awesome. and. Um, just really cool go on youtube and check out some of those uh, live live performances um but uh also as stated earlier my main man um mike will be joining me next week um he turned me on to this new album by low moon Mo- Ma- monochrome um just a really really cool uh like a bedroom um kind of pop 
project is what was described as I was doing some reading, but a little bit deeper. If you're familiar with the shoegaze, uh, a little bit more dreamy pop, uh, dark 80s. There's a lot of cool, cool uh, influence here that if you have not uh, got a chance, um, it was um, all um, put together by Mikey Wilson. Um, he performed, produced, mixed, and mastered this work. Um, go ahead and check that out um, because we're going to be talking about a lot more cooler stuff uh, just like this next week. Um, really, really cool artists that maybe you should look a little bit deeper on. We love doing that here at uh, the Hookup on music. But uh, Arctic Monkeys really haven't talked about the Arctic Monkeys too much. Haven't, haven't had too many opportunities to talk about the Arctic Monkeys, but uh, here we are. We're going to talk about them a little bit. Um, you know, great band. Great band. Um, where did I come onto the scene from them? Um, seen them perform on Saturday Night Live way back when their first album came out. And boy, was that a long time ago. Right away, I enjoyed the way he uh, held his guitar, okay? Um, when seeing, uh, hearing that song um, right off the bat, I'm like, I got to go pick up this debut album. Whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. Um, great, great. I bet you look good on the dance floor. Really long track title, okay? The band themselves have had seven um, albums. The most recent, The Car, um, Tranquility Base, Hotel and Casino before that. But uh, AM from 2013, um, definitely, definitely a uh, change of pace for them. But before we get to that a little bit, um, let's go into a little bit who is um, the band. Alex Turner's on lead vocals and he plays keyboards. He does guitars. Uh, Matt Ellers plays drums. Um, Jamie Cooks plays guitars. Nick O'Malley plays bass. Um, just really, 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 really awesome. I mean, so they've been playing together since 2002. Um, but to see them grow from that beginning sound is really, really um, huge. They have lots and lots of different influences. Um, you know what I mean? Just and have influenced lots of artists, uh, newer artists from the 1975 Fountains DC, Hosier, Mainskin, Bring Me the Horizon. Just a bunch to kind of uh, you know um, to bring to the forefront. But a lot of uh, artists who are familiar, like Jimmy Page. Um, he has great things to say about Arctic Monkeys. Also, what's crazy is just their style, how much it's changed over time. Always cool when a band can get a little bit more mature. You know what I mean? And honestly, their newer albums have alienated some of those fans from those first albums because they've eliminated some of that heavy guitar. But that's the thing. I have a feeling they could bring that heavy guitar back at any time. It's not like something where they're like, you know what? We're not going to have heavy guitar anymore. It's not something that interests us um, in the album um, spectrum. But uh, when it comes down to it, uh, they can rock. Okay. And all their albums really say that to the forefront. Uh, second album, Favorite Worst Nightmare. Lots and lots of, lots of good stuff on this. Uh, Brainstorm, uh, Balaclava. Uh, do me a favor the bad thing 505 great 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 songs humbug third album awesome awesome album um really really great uh potion approaching secret door pretty visitors my propeller come on man we're really digging and before i am suck it and see um really really a great album produced by james ford okay and again um, all of their albums seem to have just a little bit different of a vibe. So you could see kind of where they are heading. Um, brick by Brick, uh, Library Pictures, uh, title track, Suck It and See, is actually uh, really good. But again, this is a band that if you have missed out and you haven't went through these albums, and um, honestly, the newer albums, a little bit more loungy. But uh, especially, I, you know, their last one, you know, it's, this is their style. The album before that, uh, Tranquility Base uh, Hotel, just a very interesting, interesting piece, piece, piece of work that uh, I, I enjoyed quite a bit um, when it came out, which was in 2018. Just a very interesting time, um, a, a mixture of soul, progressive rock, funk, French pop. There's some film soundtracks in the French variety that you can feel in some of their newer music. Um, really worth checking out. Alex Turner's voice is worth it um 
also really worth it is the amazing uh, Megadeth. Okay. Um, Megadeth, um, a great thrash band who uh, formed in Los Angeles in 83. Of course, we know Dave Mustaine was in Megadeth. Uh, he is in Megadeth, but he was in Metallica. Okay. Um, but he needed to start his own band. How often are you thrown out of one of the biggest metal bands of all time and then start a metal band that is almost just as equally as big as the metal band in which you were thrown out of? And you're singing in that band. Um, known as part of the big three, along with Anthrax Slayer, uh, big four with Metallica. Um, very, very awesome is their music. A lot of complex um, arrangements. Okay, I love, always, always love the dual lead guitars. Um, David Stain's guitar playing is, is definitely one of a kind. And he definitely, whenever he's playing and you're able to see him live, um, which you're going to see here and listen to him on Tornado Souls, I mean, come on now. He's coming to town here with all that remains in Mudvayne to your town, to my town, to all the towns. I, I think I might have to go and see Now, that's actually from the last couple of days ago, um, a performance in which he did. So if you like that or you liked what you heard, you're going to hear a lot more awesome um, stuff like that um, on this tour. Um, long I, I i've seen them before and they opened up for a five finger death punch they should have been headlining this is that headlining show um for this uh newest album in which they came out which the, which is just honestly we've talked about it before um the sick the dying and the dead um really 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 awesome album as is dystopia the album before that um six years uh prior to that but going all the way back to their debut, 1985's Killing My Business and Business is Good. Oh, my geez. They were given 8000 by Combat to record and produce a debut album. Um, $8,000 couldn't really do a whole lot, I don't think, in great, great uh, albums and recording and all of that. But uh, it did it here. Okay. It really, really did it here. Uh, Megadeth was able to really just take something and really build off of it. Um, um, honestly, um there is a track on this debut album mechanics okay um definitely um would perform a little bit with metallica during his tenure in the band but uh the the them themselves um on that eight thousand budget they spent half of it on drugs alcohol and food so you're thinking to yourself you spent half of the budget on that and you still come away as being you know a pretty memorable debut album um but uh, that being said, there is lots and lots of good stuff on this. Um, the Skull Beneath the Skin, Choosing One, Looking Down the Cross. Um, back to Mechanics, again, um, really, really interesting. Um, they, Metallica, reworked the song um, into The Four Horsemen, but Megadeth still did Mechanics because, of course, Dave Mustaine came up with um, the guitar. Um it is recorded on their No Light to Leather 1982 uh, tape, um, which was the second demo by the band released. Um, lyrically, though, Mechanics is about, uh, I guess, uh, doing the naughty naughty at a gas station, uh, which inspired uh, Musta uh, Mustaine while he was a gas station attendant. He's also, uh, I think, switched some of that life around. From what I hear, he is a Christian now, so he probably is not jumping into too many uh well maybe it is we don't know but that being said uh just really 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 um interesting um album for a debut really 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 great um in the debut uh category department um peace sells but who's buying this is where i come out of the scene for this band um just a really 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 great great uh al um, album all around um the players on this album too chris Pauland and gar samuelson that's the one thing you're going to realize about this band megadeth is they've went through lots of different players in the band but there's one player that always seems to stay the same and that is the one and only dave mustaine just really 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 a, a, a great uh i guess i don't want to call him a great i guess you could be a great band leader but one thing that i always pride on is the same members always in your band um dave ellison who was in the band for quite a long time he's not in the band anymore um there is no long running um members in the band um anymore um but that being said um 
you know, Megadeth is a band that lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of lots and lots and lots of people enjoy. Um, rest in peace, in which we've talked about on here. Anger 18, Holy Wars Punishment do a really, 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 really interesting, um, interesting albums. And interesting is in a great way because of the progressive nature and some of the guitar work. Just really, 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 really awesome. Um, I am personally going to be attending the show that they have coming up. Um, I need to see more Megadeth. When I seen them last time, I was just shocked and blown away by the uh, quality in which their live performance was. It was just really, really awesome and really, really um, great. I'm thinking back to some of their past performance that I've seen. Um, never really disappointed me. 1997's Cryptic Writings was pretty huge um, in my department because, honestly, Trust was just such a great song, almost honest. Um I will put cryptic writings up against Metallica during the same time period and say it's 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 a hell of a whole lot better. If you have not listened to cryptic writings in a long time, um, check that out. You're, be prepared to hear some of those songs like She Wolf uh, live when you uh, are able to uh, if you are able to check them out uh, live because honestly, really really good stuff. A Secret Place is a great song. Four Text, Disintegrators, just a great album. I, I really enjoy this album. Um, but then again, I enjoy all of Megadeth's albums. Um, so please, please, please check, check, check that out. Um, needed a shout out to some Megadeth and need a shout out about the show going out. Um, you like Megadeth, we may run into each other there. So, uh, please, 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 please check out for that. Um, staple singers, um, what could be said about the staple singers? What could be said about going from Megadeth to the staple singers? You know, a band that was formed from 48 to 1994, a band that we know that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame isn't always get it right, but sometimes they do. We traveled all over the United States in an automobile for about 15 years before we started flying. Never was hurt. Can you imagine 15 years you're on the road with your family, okay? If you're not familiar, that's Pop Staples along with Cleotha Staples, Mavis Staples, Purvis Staples, Yvonne Staples. They were all part of the band. Um, really huge messages. Be What You Are is a huge album, um, personally for me. Um, Cleotha Staples, Mavis Staples, Yvonne Staples are the main, and Robach Pop Staples on vocals and guitar. Um, born in 1914, sadly passing it away at the age of 85 in Chicago, Illinois, um, in 2000. Um, but honestly, this gentleman, he's got the goods. If you have not sat down and listened to any staple singers, um, uh, what are we doing here? Because honestly, the staple singers, um, if you're ready, come go with me, which is off of that album that we are currently talking about. Be what you are. The one that we're going to focus on here tonight, um, touch a hand, make a friend. These are of course, Megadeth's got their Symphony of Destruction, but we all need to take a hand a little bit. We all need to really just <clears throat> understand what it's like to have a family band and be traveling across in a, in a car for 15 years with your children, trying to set the example. I think it's really awesome that the Staple Singers were able to really accomplish um, all of that <clears throat> in, in, in multiple, multiple, multiple different ways. Um, but again, lots of charted singles. Okay, uh, let's do it again. I honestly love you. I'll take you there. Respect yourself. Respect yourself. Okay, I'll take you there. This song, I'll take you there, um, is a great, 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 great song. Um, honestly, you've heard it. I've heard it. But it's a song that never, never, never gets old. Um, it's a song that's honestly, Sammy Hagar. He's covered um, on his 2006 album, Living It Up. Because that's what's cool. The inter integration of taking someone like Sammy Hagar and the Staple Singers, and they're in the same episode, but Sammy's covering their songs because it it really resonates. I mean, Mavis Staples is still putting out music today. Um, if you do not not have an opportunity to have heard um, her newest track, it's honestly it's um, it's really 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 good, and it's honestly um, it's it's worth your time. Um, it's really, really worth your time to 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 listen to new uh, Mavis Staples. It's 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 uh, 
people have the power is the name of the track um worthy okay but it, that, that's the the main issue is that people have the power to be worthy and the staple singers did a great job at, at showing us that um a really great if you're looking for again making people feel good you're into heavy metal and you're like you know what i want to surprise somebody and put something on just a little bit different um they were really 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 great at that um, really, really great at making you feel good. You can see in these pictures if you're watching online, but if you're listening, the band themselves, the four of them just really, really showcased a togetherness that uh, honestly, most bands should take take note. Um, I hear a lot of bands that do have family members in it, like Oasis. They sure weren't uh, together like this. And I, I like some Oasis or the Black Crows or any other band that has brothers in it. Um, just really, really, really... Um, you know, an interesting, interesting thing. Um, also very interesting is the band Lord Huron. Um, a big fan of this band. We've talked about them several times on here. But uh, their album, uh, Vita Noir, if you have not got a chance, please check into this album. Um, it was released on 2018, but there are some really awesome songs on it. Ancient Names Part 1, a six-minute and two-second uh, song is really, really rocking. Um but the album as a whole gives you just a lot of different feelings of a band that does different things. Um, ben Schneider on vocals is really, really awesome. Um, made it all the way to, into the top 10 of the uh, Billboard chart. So people bought this album. It was a high, uh, highly, highly, highly awesome um, good album. The Night We Met is a great track. Another one that kind of fits into uh, into the, what do you mind calling here, into the the laid back genre, but there is some good rocking on here. Um, producer David Friedman, um, band choose to work with because of his work with date, uh, Tame and Paul and the flaming lips and Baranis definitely, uh, brings the sounds to the forefront. There's a lot of those cool technical sounds that you, uh, hear a little bit that, uh, you might be saying to yourself, Oh, wait a minute here. This sounds really awesome. And this sounds like something that I'm going to, Oh, turn up really loud so that's why it's a great album and a great uh purchase uh also a really 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 great uh album and a really great purchase and i can't stop playing this song is tony tony tony's anniversary that's my name tony 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 that guitar line is sick and the song anniversary is sick um there's a longer version is sick the video is sick if anybody you're dating you're looking for something to go really smooth i think tony tony tony's anniversary is great and honestly they just played last weekend in country club hills uh it was an amazing amazing show um tony 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 um just creeped back up on my charts crept back in my life but that song anniversary is really great and we're gonna have a lot of anniversaries around here so that's that's why that's one's a really really good one for you to jam if it's uh if you haven't heard of the guitar line on that's really really good too um foo fighters debut album from 1995 july 4th okay uh coming out in the uh unfortunate wake of the uh death of uh Kurt Cobain. Um, this album is definitely one that uh, just came out of the gate with singles. This is a call. I'll stick around for all the cows. Big me. Um, but just really, really, really memorable. Um, for me personally, it's this that gets gets the whole entire band started. When people tell you they're so over the have you listened to this? <laughs> Wow, how young that they look. And it's even before Taylor Hawkins joined the band. But again, the album is 44 minutes and four seconds. Okay. Only recorded in six days. Six days. Unusual. Six days. I just can't believe that. My mind is blown. Um, just was putting together uh, riffy wallops on demos and really, really came up with something magical. And I'm glad that he did because honestly, it's been good for him and it's been good for music. If you like just rock music, if you're into the just straight up rock music, I mean, this debut album is really what kick kickstarted it. Um, before we've talked about the color and the shape, but uh, really great harmonies on the album. Just really, really great music videos too. Um, you like Green Day, you like Offspring, you like Better Than Ezra? I mean, that was compared when it came out. I don't know if I would compare that now. There's some really, really good deep tracks though on this album. 
Um, Ecstatic is good. Alone in an Easy Target is one of my personal favorites. Weenie Beanie's great. Exhausted. Great out at 44 minutes. Been playing it a lot lately. Maybe you should dig back into it if it's been a little bit of a while for you. Um, crazy, crazy craziness going on out there. Just this past week, um, if you are a fan of the band Aerosmith, they sadly had to cancel their whole tour. Steven Tyler's voice is not going to get any better. So sadly, they if you did have tickets for that show, it's been canceled, which had the Black Crows opening up, which was kind of cool. But uh, sadly, no Aerosmith anymore. No more live shows. Doubt uh, they could record something. Um, also yesterday, really kind of sad and crazy. The Fugees just canceled their whole tour. Um, no reason why yet, but uh, you know what I mean? Just canceling. That's been going on a lot recently. Lots and lots and lots and lots of canceling. Um, but here, there's going to be no canceling. We're going to keep listening to great music and keep, 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 keep uh, having a good time. Like I stated, uh, next week, we are going to have a really, really awesome guest joining us, digging deep into the music. Mike, uh, really, really awesome. This guy's uh, a radio show that does a really, really great job on Sunday nights that we talked about last time. We're going to dig back into some really awesome tunes. Um, also, this past Friday, if you didn't have a chance, please go check out the last At The Show Um podcast it was a really really good time we dug deep into seven at the end i picked the soundtrack brain scan which just has great music by tad and uh prime is doing welcome to this world which was on pork soda but uh pork soda but that's where i kind of got my start in it really good stuff check out the uh, website awesome stuff ch- dropping check out all the cool podcasts on the sadistic penguin studios youtube channel um Honestly, uh, we will be back for this next Wednesday, like I said, live. So please, please join us at the show. We'll be back a week from Friday. Uh, Join us there. Uh, Please leave comments of your favorite albums. Leave new music. Um, Today I was doing some adding up. It's been over 200 artists that has been thrown onto our uh, shoulders since starting the show. And honestly, it's just so awesome and amazing to talk new music. It's awesome to dig back into some classics. It's really awesome to really be all around because honestly, I want to be with you with all these anniversaries. We're always going to have anniversaries here. My name is Tony, and I just want to tell you again, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out and joining us to talk music. Nothing is greater, nothing is more fun. And until we do it again next week, everyone out there, keep spinning those records. Thank you for listening. Please look out for the audio version wherever you jam.